to your your fellow Scandinavians in, in terms of the, the, the NIP uh, in the lower bracket already? Or do you feel like their mixed play over the last few weeks suggests that they might have been in here? Yeah, they've been looking more and more cold, I would say, every right. week. Then if you look back just, I want to say, two months, they were looking pretty solid. And now they're on a downward turn. And I don't know if you want to call it a slump or whatever, but they might hopefully be able to pick it up again. Um, but I would say their opponent in the first round wasn't the easiest either. So mm. they could probably learn something from those games and bounce back. They still have a really good chance round in uh, this group rather into okay uh, and team team on the other hand henrik um a lot of people would have looked at this and gone yeah all right uh, nice team um plenty of experience in here the guy x mike he's a he's a great guy you know he's been around the scene forever um they've played for 64 teams these these five players in their checkered yeah. dota 2 history you'd look at it and go how the hell have they qualified for this that's why I, i'm not saying that but some people have said that um but they put up a good fight in that opening series, which suggests that they're playing very well. Yeah, they did pretty decently. The second game I, I looked, they got kind of stomped, but the other two games yeah. were good. They won one, so that's something, but I don't know what that says about the NA scene. You know, when Alex Mike comes back, does that mean that he's like actually back really good and strong, or is that just NA scene being super you know, needy for a new captain? Like, is this how long is Lotus sinking? Does. Is that right, you know? Somebody doesn't like Ike's Michael. No, I, I do like him. He's been doing good. He's also drafting now. Yeah. I didn't know that. And I'm very, you know, I'm feeling it. Well, I mean, lose the Tash, gain some Dota brain yeah. cells or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I mean, there was this other team, Team Runes, who nobody really thought was like a proper team. Don't, don't uh, start, because they, they have seven points already. Yeah, Radiant much more than yeah. any of us. Indeed. Seven more than all of us. Uh, I'm not trying. These two guys are trying. So I just want to point that out. I mean, not trying is just an excuse for failing. It's no, it's not. Trying with it. Like, they can't you're see it can, anyway. There's, there's, there's no zooming, so it doesn't just, matter. Can we zoom in on that, please? <laughs> no. This is basically. This <laughs> very. It's a good symbolism for you. Actually. Like, <laughs> you stop staring at me. I'm right? feeling weird. No, I like I like your pin. I like things. You too. It's a D, Five actually. Seconds well, it's kind Why of like an arrow. D? It's, 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 it's actually it's an like arrow. D, it's an arrow towards you. Yeah. It's, it's pointing at you, yep. what it's actually doing. Uh, as you may have realized, we are into the draft for uh, game number one. Um, we've got an IO gyro. That we do. Where are you on this whole IO gyro mag PA hierarchy thing? I think Io is still an exceptional hero if you're a very comfortable team. I would say the hero has shifted a little bit from being just outstanding for pretty much anyone who plays it decently. So now right. you maybe need somewhat of a specialist or at least a very good player to make the hero look good. Um, but I, I still think Io Jaro is a great combination. And I especially think it's good against what they traded for. Tusk Tai doesn't seem like a very good trade off in my book uh, for giving it. So I like NIP based on this opening. Gyro is really good, right? Against Tide in the lane. You yeah. got a lot of magic burst. Anchor Smash doesn't really matter too much. I'm a little bit worried about though PPD now. Like he's losing his creativity. Like the first series, just pick the goddamn <laughs> Terrible every game. And now he doesn't know what to pick. Just pick the Wisp Gyro, you know? Like he's losing his edge here. He's but supposed to be a smart drafter. The third pick. That'd be terrible. And then you'll be blown remaining. away. That will be next level. Together. Radiant Mid Gyro for Fata. I think I've seen that. Yeah. But that was when he was not, like, super nerfed. Bata or the hero? <laughs> <laughs> the hero. Don't okay. you dare insult my Germans here. You're Germans? But you left them. Yeah, I was going to say also, he, he forgot earlier that Kuro was from Germany. Yeah. That's just pointing that out. N no, I didn't. Fellow. You did. Yeah, you did. I just acted. Really See, Henrik, did he, did he forget? He did. I he was did. very offended. You, you, you were here, weren't you? That was pretty much a ban, wasn't it? But yeah. why, why is he offended? Because you cannot forget about Kuroki. I didn't. It's the face of Dota. I, it wasn't X. the face of Dota? Yeah. It is now. It is? Yeah. You don't well. see his face on that much. Like if they made... Business it, stuff. Like, Sindarin, imagine EA... Okay. Imagine EA <laughs> made... Up. Great art. Imagine EA made Dota every year and sold it as a franchise. Mm -hmm. you know, so it was like EA Sports Dota 2019. Kuro would be the poster boy, wouldn't Ten he? seconds remaining. Artesi is probably more the face of Dota 2, most people. What about Deadly? Well, okay, 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 okay. 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 this year though, Kuro. this year. Would it, would it be Kuro or would it be No-Tail? Or would it be Seb? Or Mad, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. So you just don't know how they pick him, do you? No. Or would it be Dendi? 
or, or Dabby would have been the face for a couple of years. Yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. Bullock would have been the face for a month. Dying yeah. Team. But if the game came out in that month. In in August 2013. Yeah. Radiant team. September 2013. Then it would have looked for a better face. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my face. <laughs> uh, my back face to draft because we have a third pick. Uh, ooh, we have a disruptor. Disruptor. Well, the classic counter to Wisp. Even though you don't really rely on relocate anymore. Hmm. Yeah, it gives them good team fight though. They obviously have Static Storm and Ravage, so generally Ravage can Ten set up or perhaps a two man kinetic storm at least. Um, but five seconds. Also, yeah. can I can I just put on record? I would love a team team T shirt. The one they have. They're amazing. It looks really good. It's amazing. They're singlets, right? Proper, proper team shirt. That is. That's the word I don't hear. That proper. Very very British word. It's, uh, it's a rather British word, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're actually taking their time here in IP. I'm not sure what options they're juggling. Here. There it is. Uh, Look at it. Enjoy it. Glory. Is that universe? No. <laughs> it's semi boy. It is semi boy. It looks like universe to me a little bit. A little bit. Some similarity, I guess. Yeah. Not the shirt, though. Universe dresses in. Bit different attire. Oh, yeah, not as classy as that. Uh -huh. Yeah, third pick. Tinder, you're here for a Nine reason. Can you two. like predict terribly? Oh, there it is. Spirit Breaker. We all saw it coming. Yeah, <laughs> explain it then. <laughs> uh, generally, so what I would say is when you have IO, you want your other support to oftentimes be able to set up something. So either have some sort of a stun or a catch that you could relocate on or. Uh, play well in tandem with the IO in lanes if you want to try a lane or uh, just, you know, enable IO to play with the core of its choice and five give them the best possible. Remaining. And I think Spirit Breaker is one of PPD's favorite fives when he has to play Playmaker. It's yeah. either Spirit Breaker, Tusk, which is taken, Radiant and we've seen team. some Elder Titan from him, but it doesn't really fit the bill and it was banned. This was probably the best option. They took a lot of time. I guess he was like, do you really feel Spirit Breaker into Tusk and Disruptor? It's, it's a bit counterintuitive in a lot of ways, but maybe it was the best. Choice. The charger is pretty fast now, so you can't really disrupt or glimpse him anymore. Yeah. If you go, just go ham with the movement speed. You're gonna hate that stun. Ten I'm picking the jugger. Yeah. This is gonna get side. It's never fun to play care against the Spirit Breaker. So we're going Puck or OD for Fata. Doesn't feel like the best Puck. You've been, on this, you've, you've been on this whole puck every game. I played yeah. lots of lots of puck. And have you, you've been pucking around. Mm -hmm. the, the new change, I think, is really underrated that you can't TP. And Fada is uh, very famous for his puck as yeah. well. Like, he is the yeah. most played of anyone. I However, think. there is, a, there is a, a bulldog favorite Ten in the game. Seconds. Yeah, I'm just thinking, are they going to play this as a core? It looks like it, right? Because yeah. so far, PBD has been yeah. almost exclusively playing this hero, but this game. Look like that's possible, so it's finally a core profit. I think one of the things that NIP might might not be, be using enough right now compared to how good they are, I think 33 plays really well on micro. He's profit, he's played off lane Lycan in the past, he's kind of and you know, pushing heroes, Visage, Broodmother, he has played for them in the mid lane, so uh, if they get an opportunity where they feel like these heroes are good, I think it's a, it's a good grab for him. Instead of putting him on more of these like static heroes like Tide that we've He's, you know, he's doing his job. It's not like he's playing bad. It just doesn't necessarily get to show his extra 10 or 15% that he can do on other heroes. And Nature's Prophet is really good with Spirit Breaker. Lots of global potential to find kills. They even have Relocate on top of it. Same split push potential as yeah. well among these heroes. So Surprised this, this hero is not getting more picked, honestly. Like, yeah, we see, uh, really good. Gambit picked it a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I, I spam it. I, I managed to get ranked 200. Yeah. That means it must be good, right? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> if I can do it. Yeah, exactly. I think you're right. I'm just kidding. No. No, I'm kidding. No. I can do it with any I'm here. not kidding. What rank are you? I don't remember. Better than you. No. I remember that. That's the most important thing. Yeah, for now. <laughs> just kidding. I'm coming. Should we, sh Fury, I'm should, we, uh, should we do TI win rates at this point? Or? Uh, that's probably not the best idea. Yeah, what what is Cinder's win rate at TI? Zero? That's, that's exaggerated. We buy a lot. No, no, like by around twenty-two percent. Yeah. yeah. So since then, I beat Winter. <laughs> twenty-two. <laughs> What's Black? Uh, 
Uh, just a little bit higher than that, yeah. What is it? Uh, I think it was around about 24. <laughs> What's Bulldogs? Yeah. Hopefully it's not better than uh, it's, it might actually It's be. about 45 from memory. Oh, I'm getting it from good. memory, yeah. You won TI, but you didn't even win more than half your No, game. because he, he then screwed up when they went back. I know. That yeah. was my team's fault, yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> He's a team player, and it was his team's fault. Yeah. yeah. That's the good thing about team games. It can always be someone else's fault. Yeah, you yeah. I mean, like, look, Winter went zero and fourteen at TI, right? Yeah, he did. And then it was all his team. Even when he's not at these events, he's still at these points. Love you, Winter. If you're watching, by the way, buddy. Hi. If you're not watching, I understand. We're just yeah. blaming anyway. Yeah, so. absolutely. He, he knows. Yeah. He knows the score. Yeah. Uh, where are we going then, boys? Uh, last, last pick. I think now that they have both Nature's Prophet and Spirit Breaker, they don't necessarily need the hero to be too playmaker oriented. The puck did get banned though. I mean, they want to so have a lockdown, right? At just least. pick the DK. Yeah, yeah, Dragon Knight seems pretty solid. It's not like the ultimate catch, but it fits very well with the lineup. I like Dragon Knight. The yeah. concern is you don't know his lane matchup because he missed their mid hero. But if you want something open ended, uh, what you can do with Dragon Knight that gives him some flexibility in this kind of draft is that he can go on side lanes, play one on two lanes. Maybe you could put Nature's Prophet mid, or be really creative, maybe Io Gyro mid, or just the Gyro. Play Io with the Dragon Knight or something. I don't know. Or just go Kunkka. Like, uh, Kunkka good. Kunkka. Like we see last pick Kunkka good. Good Kunkka. Kunkka good. Pugna. Pugna good. Pugna good. Well, they have two stuns. Yeah. They have a lot of pushes. It's really smart, because the Jugger will ult, and then he'll decrepify that target, mm. and then no one dies. Yep. That's actually insanely smart. What yep. if he has Mjolnir though? And then die from a lightning Ike's Mike looks like he has it all figured out though. I'm expecting the godlike counterpick. There is, is, there is no counterpick uh, to Pugna. That's the really good thing about picking Five Pugna in this position is that Pugna has very few bad lane matchups in mid that are just unplayable. Pugna is definitely not a good one in the band. Uh, tiny! Tiny! It's fine. <laughs> I kind of like this Tiny pick though. I don't think it's that bad. Cool. It's a lot of magic burst. It can kill the Pugna pretty easily in the game. You don't necessarily kill him in the lane. Uh, you can kill the guy who gets decrepified really easily. I think it plays in pretty well with the rest of their draft. And they have a something I like about Tiny that we didn't see in the last series is that they have some low cooldown action. You know, we saw um, Keen Gaming were playing a lot of these like big team fight ultis. Now we have some shorter cooldowns that Tiny. Uh, the uh, the Twitter doom. Says uh, seventy-seven percent have gone with NIP. Uh, I'm not sure if that was after draft or just before, but I'm imagining before or during. Uh, let's find out from you, gents. This is your turn. Uh, Cinderin, are you aware of the rules? I need to be very clear on this. There is. The, 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 these are being marked. Okay. Your predictions are being recorded. I was telling Toby that I'm playing this like a game of hearts. Have you ever right. played that yes. card game? Yeah. 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 So if I get everything wrong, I win. It's like getting all the hearts and the Queen of Spades. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's absolutely correct. So and uh, I think I Pyrian. But Pyrian's also playing that game. Yeah, he's probably winning that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's maybe it's I should try to catch up. I'll go for an IP in this one. Okay. Uh, not necessarily that much based on draft. I think both drafts are fine. Maybe an IP is slightly favored, but I also think they're a better team. Right. Admiral Bulldog. I'm, I'm sorry to have to concur with Syndra. It makes me feel really bad. Because he's usually wrong. Right. Statistically, this is a bad decision. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> so you're also going with that. Uh, I'm feet. feeling the draft. Uh, looking good. Okay. Uh, and uh, I know you wanted to see the puck. Didn't see the puck. Did get to see in the last game, though. Which was nice. Uh, which way are you going this time? NIP. Because my... You can't be. Because Bulldog said so. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. I feel. I feel like you're going to copy Bulldog for the entire show until day five, grand final, final game, and then you'll just be like, right, which way did he go? I'll go the other way, and then one of us wins. Exactly. What an easy way to win the game. Uh, let's bring in our commentary team and ask them for their predictions as well, just to keep the game going, gents. Game I one. Things are looking a little one-sided over there. It is a little bit one-sided. Do you want to even it up a bit, or? I thought. Do you? I don't. No. Yeah, I mean, really? Twitter, Twitter said 77 percent. Those are the same people that are on Reddit. I can't go against it. I'm in IP as well. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't believe in Mike, not since he shaved the tash down. It's not wow! Uh, see, if I had a choice of doing anything right now, I'd be I'd be on the board with Team Team. So, uh, let's get back to the game. Gents, take it away. Game on. I think it's still unfair that he's never has to give a score. He should be on the board now for Team Team. Oh, definitely. And this is an interesting one to look at. Is, is I mean, team, team, the way I look at this draft is you have to win these lanes. You can't, you have to be super aggressive. There's no way you can sit back and say late game will be fine, right? 
for me this feels more of a like a pop draft where you have a little bit of everything uh, also another early tide reveal but uh, Cinderin had a good point at least they have a tiny which is a low cooldown they can pretty much fight all the time the only big cooldown they have is Ravage Juggernaut has ulti but even without ulti the hero can still fight and Static Storm can be very useful it's not the biggest cooldown either if it's 90, 80, 70 and, and that's kind of thing the interesting thing about Disruptor as a hero is he's just this guy that if he runs in and drops kinetic field and static storm and dies... Oh yeah, that hero's garbage, I forgot to say that. Uh, <laughs> Which means he's done what he needs to if he just drops those ults. This hero is so weak in a tri lane, he uses Thunderstrike and that's it. But the thing is, you have a Tusk, which is uh, one of the best tri laners, so it, it might work for them. They're already swapping Spirit Breakers on the bottom alone. He's gonna get some XP. And uh, I like 33 on these micro heroes, I liked his... Broodmother and uh, Lycan. I don't think this meta and heroes that are being played kind of fits his profile. Yeah, I remember you said on the panel, it's like he, he's usually this flashy guy. He likes yeah. to get the opportunity to show off. And most of the time, as an off player right now, it's like, have you built a Vlad's yet? No? Why haven't you built a Vlad's yet? We need one. And that's your job. And then just push. The mid lane's going to be the more intriguing one. Is, is there any real way that Tiny can try and pick off Pugna here, other than him making a mistake? I don't think so. He's gonna get the second Null, gonna be tanky enough. He really doesn't threaten Pagna in any way, especially with the new Avalanche. And at the same time, when you look at the supports, maybe Tusk can rotate, but Disruptor, it's not really a hero that's gonna be very useful in a gank. If you see someone rotating, missing from the bottom lane, you can start playing aggressive and you have this kind of a global presence with the Spirit Breaker and the Nature's Prophet, so it's not, not an easy kill to get. Alternately, wherever the disruptor is and the rest of his team isn't, yeah, they, kill him. I think team team needs needed to react uh, to lane swapping because they want to fight against uh, Io and Gyro. Instead, you have a Tide Hunter. Tide's gonna get uh, XP, not not the easiest skill to get, but the uh, Kraken Shell doesn't work against magical damage, and Gyro deals a ton of damage with the uh, Rocket Barrage. That's true. But the problem is, your lot down this lane is on a delay. As soon as that home missile is placed, Ty just knows to back up. It will slow down his farm a little bit, but it makes it very hard to take him off. And we're just seeing how badly Disruptor trades here. As he put down the Thunderstrike and instantly 33 just runs at him clicking. I mean, he's sitting on one armor when he hits him with the Blightstone. He's on minus armor, then deals, takes a ton of the damage. Pagna. Look at Pagna on the mid lane. He's, he's juggling his wall. Yeah. It's kind of a thing for the Radiant side, it's a little bit easier to just move over and get double value between the lane and the, uh, the jungle now. The interesting part is going to be in the bot lane. Once Spirit Breaker hits 2, we might see some aggression coming out with that preview into what they can do to Disruptor. And once you have a 2 on Spirit Breaker, you can just run at him. So they're definitely going to be forced to be a little bit more defensive and make sure Disruptor's positioning is fairly far back here. Yeah, that's why Disruptor is... Saving a point, no glimpse, no kinetic field. If he charges him, he can use any any of the spells. So far, Pugna building a little bit of a lead here, but denies going the way of Tiny. Like, it's just basically, he's, it looks like he's got a good lead, but in terms of lane creeps, it's definitely going bad for Tiny, which you expect the other one, he does have one of the highest damages at the beginning. 33, getting low here. But both sides have to back up. Oh, the bash coming out. Charge through on the new ship. Kinetic Field does go down. They get one more bash. They might have Mike. And they get the lock, though. Doesn't look like they'll be able to. And actually, the Blade Fury coming out from Sammy, boys. Blade Fury says, see you later. It's a little bit too late, though. The TB lasts too long. And that will be the first lock drawn by the Juggernaut. Meme on the top lane. Brax, is it going to be run down here? Looks like it. They've got the Rocket Barrage available. And that'll be enough to fell the Tide Hunter. I don't think it's 33. Trip died there. He has boots of speed. He can just... Uh easily run away from Juggernaut. Juggernaut just bought boots. Definitely an interesting choice. They weren't that close to him either. And they'd already seen the kinetic field leveled, so it wasn't like there was a risk of a glimpse back into a Blade Fury. Now, can they get aggressive on this Pugna? They have to know that he's going back and forth between this jungle, so maybe you try and make a move when he moves across, but... I mean, he's level 5. You're a level 2 Tusk. It's not like you've got all your skills available yet. This Pugna is not dying. He has a Magic Wand, Fairy Fire also has a Raindrop, so he's gonna tank a lot of that damage, and once he hits level 6, you really don't want to gank the Pagna because it can just easily backfire. 
nothing until you put your hands on maybe like Static Storm 6 on your supports. You won't feel safe going for that Pugna kill at all. And at the same time, when you look at the tiny Pugna matchup, eventually Tiny wants to try and rotate and find kills, whereas Pugna's happy to sit in the lane and hit towers. Yeah, Tiny's gonna rely on runes. If he gets an Invis rune, if he gets a Haste rune, just gank a side lane, runes are spawning. The bounty ones. Let's see who gets what. Looks like team team, they've got three of the runes. Actually, just one go in the way of NIP. As Sax is able to secure them a single one. So far, things are oddly quiet for a game with a Tusk and a Spirit Break Ring. Usually, you see a lot more aggression coming out. They're going to try right now. Then feels down with a Blade Fury as well. 33 has no easy escape plan here. The charge in from PPD a little bit too late to do anything. He can't really just stand in the lane. Especially when you have a position 5 Spirit Breaker, so it's kind of kind of hard to be in this uh, 1 versus 3 scenario. Especially since both heroes are getting closer to the level 3. Once you get a glimpse up, once you get the snowball, there's no way he's leaping out. It's, yeah, it's pretty awkward as well when you look at this scenario where you've got this Nature Prophet that is susceptible to this tri lane, and your other support is an Io. He's not really going to sit down there with the Natures, he needs to be up here with the Gyro. So there's always that... Not necessarily risk, it's more like you're stuck in one place. You yep. are motionless as a Spirit Breaker. They need to play on a different lane. Bottom lane, they can't do anything. They should play around the mid, have a charge, have a TP. Wagner is level 6, and uh, we can see the rotation. Sadly, both these heroes are level 2, so that's a, that's a lot of time wasted. I, I don't think they can get a kill on Pagna. This is the second time they've wandered around this area. Now, Life Drain coming out, Disruptor. Gonna get out of range. The charge is on its way from PPD. Nushim, he at least gets a D ward on the way out. Also crossed by Ryo to make sure there's no pursuit. Kinetic field down to make sure PBD doesn't go any further. Ice shards come out though. They've got the tag team to work with. In a few seconds, Snowball is still available as well. PBD, he's tanky, but not that tanky. Snowball lock him in place nicely. Time so the charge gets interrupted. And Ryo does get the kill. And that's a lot of time to actually give the position 5 Spirit Breaker on the bottom lane. Nature's Prophet getting some XP, Juggernaut level 5 right now, so there's no kill potential when the supports are missing. And that's the thing, even if you have the Omni Slash available, you've still got all the trains to work with. You just stay close to them, 33 feels pretty comfortable. And also if you commit the Blade Fury, he just TPs away. Not like the first example, these ones would work out. Top lane, they're going aboard on the sack, so the charge is going to come in. Can they do enough? Snowball through, look for the opportunity, they're actually going to be there, home missile as well. Tusk, he'll be the one falling. So far, Team Team, their rotations have been backfiring pretty rapidly. Yeah, even without uh, Fata TPing there, it's, it's a hard kill to get. Oh, Fata's gonna get killed here. The life drain, Brax cannot escape, and you just saw the TP away. Yeah, and that's a dead tier one tower, definitely. No way. They're defending that. Bottom lane is gonna be fine with the Treants. 747. Has a double damage in the room, he should be the one trying to push the mid lane. 33 gonna TP out, but the snowball interrupts it, he does go down. That's three heroes for that kill. And you're still gonna lose your top tier one uh, at a pretty early point. Yeah, 747 just popped the DD, took a tree, wants to pressure the tower. Ryoya needs to find a kill this DD is the problem. He's gonna be a charge through, interrupt with the avalanche. Ryoya thinking about going, but decides against it. He saw how long it took him to kill him last time. When you're caught in Avalanche, it looks like you're having a seizure. <laughs> Just flailing around. The worst part is when you're trying to do so, uh, like a skill. Like imagine if Dazzle trying to shell a grave. Just looks like a cheering. The good news for NIP as well with taking that tier 1, you can already see it as Ace starts to move in the jungle, is he now has his freedom to take that area away from Team Team. Because they don't easily jump onto this Io Gyro combo is the problem. I like how they just ditched the mid. They've said, PBD, just use it to get some XP, maybe a few little pieces of gold thrown together so you have one or two items. Because Tiny's not going to push that hard. Yeah, but they're going to take the tier 2 tower on top, and the tier 1 tower on bottom is <laughs> full <laughs> HP. Untouched. Yep. There's no punishment. This feels like the problem right now is NIP, they have a very clear goal in mind. Take control of that die jungle. And Team Team... They can't find anything. We, we saw them try and rotate around the map so early, and that means their supports are behind in terms of XP. They're Radiant's a little bit crippled. Bottom tower is under attack. They make something happen now, though. Nature's Prophet's in their jungle. They ping out. Avalanche. There's the Ice Shards with the tag team as well. 33 will be going down this time. The 
Push continues. Life drain is there. Brax. Tides usually feel tanky. This doesn't look very tanky to me in the box. Yeah, it's just a brown boots, uh, magic stick. Tide, even though he maxed Dragon Shell. Oh, oh Mana! The snowball a little bit too late. They wouldn't have been able to get in range anyway. He already read that and TP'd out just in time. When you're playing position 5, Disruptor, laning stage is over. You don't want to put 2 points in Thunder Strike. You just want to get uh, Max out of Glimpse because you're not getting any levels. Yeah, Thunder Strike harassing in lane. The other 2 spells were actually finding kills. If he had it there, he could have stopped the TP. TP leaving Glimpse back here. Got the Blade Fury and the Spike available, but as a kill under a Spirit Breaker, they only want to have to use the Blade Fury here, and that should be enough to bring down the big Mukau. Or is it? Life Drain? There it is. Omni Slash gets forced out, and all Fighter had to do is stand on the side looking up. I think that's the right move, though. He could have decrepified his Spirit Breaker, but I think if you do that, then no Omni Slash is committed. They just run him down. Just had to set that imminency for the, uh, for the Juggernaut. Yeah, we didn't talk about Gyro at all. His 201 farming with his partner, Side Gunner. It's Gyro, though. We didn't even care about that hero. All right. Do you remember the start of 2018 and how riddled with Gyrocopter it was? Are we not sick of that hero and happy that he kind of is dead without Io? I mean, he, he was OP. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Static's still in the mid lane. They're going to turn around the fighter. You better find a kill. He's pretty tanky, but not tanky enough. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, they're going onto the juggernaut. Sammy Boy, Lewis, Trouble Death, have the blade through, trying to save it. But no, Devon Strike with a home missile timing. Perfectly done. No chance for a spin away. Spirit Breaker bought the kill, so he got himself the level 6, and also the XP he took uh, on the mid alone while they were making the rotation he actually paid out. And this is the thing, the, the preview of what to come. As you look at the top lane, there's no towers there outside the base for Team Team. And this Pugna is just going to get a lot more rapid with these movements. At the same time, Natures will be able to apply pressure in alternate lanes, forcing you to split up. 747 is actually really farmed. He has a, a Blink Dagger, almost Power Treads, and uh, they, they need to smoke. Push the wave, try to smoke, get a pick off, and then push the towers because they really don't deal any any damage to the towers. That's the thing, you pick up the blink, you need to get aggressive straight away. You know, we talk about sometimes seeing these blinks, we talked about like Tidehunter, Enigma, these dummy heroes that can't do it because of the cooldowns. But if you do pick up that blink, you need to get value out of it straight away. And there's the smoke movement. Radiant they have scanning. got level 6 on the Disruptor. The Static storm still on cooldown for the meantime. They're cut across looking for something. Question is, can they find it? Eye breaks the smoke, it just moves away. Dyer's middle Wasted effort so far. Attack. Maybe they're going to cut across. They might be able to find 33 in the mid lane. Nope. Everything has been spotted. This was not the optimal move for Team Team. The problem is, if they make a movement, they could have 4 slash 5 heroes inside of Nip in 2-3 seconds. A charge, relocate, Mage Prophet TP. The global presence is definitely yeah. a problem. And as a result, Team Team just have to go back to farming. The good news for Juggernaut is he's getting a lot of gold. He's just been left alone in that bottom area of the map. But that's, we talked about this before. This area is the least valuable. It's not bad if you're in recovery. You just need some quick gold. But what's the transition? What's the point at which your Juggernaut can start to take fights better than this Gyrocopter? Feels like both teams don't want to fight. TPD. TPD got caught. All right, he, he, on me slash on cooldown. He's tanking all of them this game so far. It's not the worst case scenario. It's better than a core dropping to that, because Omni Slash is a big part of Juggernaut's kill potential through the early mid game. And then eventually you get to the late stage with the new one, machine gunning it with like a double butterfly. This is the good news about Jarai as well, by the way, is that this is not a dire side Jarai, so you don't have access to that holy trinity of gold at uh, the ancients at least it's something now. yeah it's a constellation prize but it, it works out so far I, I just don't feel like we're seeing any moves from Ryoya here it, it's more just defensive blinks and failed smokes which is this is not why you pick this tiny this tiny is mid game aggression fine pick offs constantly but as you said that global presence right that's the biggest concern in his mind every time he makes a move oh look at the disruptor New Sham just going for a straight Aghanim Scepter. That, I like it. You gotta do something. I mean, 
Honestly, Disruptor, he doesn't really have any in between nights. Maybe a Glimmer Cape. But other than that, it's not really any golden pickups. It's not like a Bane with an Aether Lens, for example. You already have a lot of range on your Glimpse. You don't really need additional. Well, you don't if you can have a level 2 Glimpse. Instead of level 2 Thunderstrike. He's got Instead it now. Instead of level 1 Thunderstrike. They're just waiting on the high ground. Like, team Team... They're expecting people to come for the runes, but... NIP so far pre-composed. They're in no rush. They know they have control and... Uh oh. Sammy Boy forced from the blade through. Relocate's coming in. They spawned him out. They know he doesn't have Omni Slash. Cooldown's gonna be there. Sammy Storm to protect. That's not enough. Sammy Boy's down. They toss in the disruption. They're gonna go even deeper. Can they do enough here? Hanging up so much time with Jarrah. Cut to get low. The Ravage through. Connects on the free. They should be able to bring him down. Finally, he's gonna fall for the Never Frost. So much damage. Alright, Spike will go down to the Never Strike. Hold him in place. Ryoya on the retreat. And they catch him. The is gonna come out. Avalanche to buy himself a little bit of time. But they've got the charge available with the life drain as well. He should get out of range as the bash gets him far enough away. But they're gonna chase forward. Never blast out the Crepper Fire as well. One more tap. Blame. And that tiny is dead. Blink away. Just in time. PPD under the tower needs to be careful. He needs to back it up of his team. Io is back. Ready to assist. And looks like Tiny will live. The aggression stops here. We can see the difference between tier 1 and tier 2 teams. Uh, they immediately, three of them TP'd to save the Juggernaut, but the order of TP's is uh, Disruptor went first. Disruptor's not gonna do anything. You want Tidehunter to go first, Ravage immediately, then follow up with other spells. In this condensed area, you think with that static storm, with the ravage, it will pay off, but that it's four, four TP was from Tidehunter. The yeah. ravage came in really late, and the, look at the reload. He almost saved, saved so the gyro close. there. They still clean up a lot of kills afterwards. It's a three for one exchange. Killing gyro is great, but if your juggernaut has to die for it, it's never worth it. This is like the biggest thing to look at right now. Is, is Jug up to this point is keeping even with the gyro, but this is going to begin to accelerate. As Jug has to risk his life more to farm, Jaro should start to build a little bit of a lead. So far, though, with the Battle Fury, keeping up. Yeah, he's keeping up, but uh, it's Io Gyro. Io just got uh, level 10, 20% XP gain, and uh, the cores are getting BKBs, which I like, inside of NIP. Gyro has it, just needs to use the Courier. Also, Pagana has one queued up. Looks like, uh, the, looks like Dota Plus believes in Team Team right now. 60% to 40%. Which is interesting considering the state of the game. The tower's taken the gold lead already. Let's say NIP, they, they, they seem to be in a more favorable position. Especially taking out those top towers so early on. Yeah, I know Dota Plus loves Io and Gyro. I don't know why. 40% or NIP. Maybe it loves Juggernaut too? Attack. Possible. So far, the only place they feel safe for Team Team is this bottom right side of the map. That's just not good enough. There's only so many heroes you can station there, and whenever they stick someone elsewhere on the map, you're in trouble. I mean, even for your Juggernaut, right? He can go for his Blade Fury TPs out, but you're talking about a Spirit Breaker with an Ever Strike to stun you. Oh, yeah. Three, okay. Seven, four, seven. Three, oh, yeah. Can they get in time? Yes! The charge connects to the last second, and that means that that's a very dead tiny. Oh, that, that was really the last second before he tried to TP out. It's a level 2 charge. Not the fastest fellow. He did max out the bash first, just trying to maximize that damage. And Brax could go for TP away. Should be fine. The wall punch there for Max Mike to ensure there's no disruption. And now, the cooldown will connect him to Tusk. Gonna chase through the bash is there on the new shim. He's locked in place. Gonna put down the connected field, but it's too late. Tusk is dead. The glimpse away won't be good enough. The never strike bashes him back, and that will be a double kill for Ace. And that'll actually be a tier two as well. Spado's already waiting here with the creep wave coming in. The problem is, heroes inside of Team Team, they're not that mobile. Because I just see the perfect execution from NIP, they're bottom at five seconds after they're on the opposite side of the map. It's definitely looking rough. I mean, we looked at Team Team and those early attempts to rotate by the supports, and the difference was that if NIP had been in that position, it wouldn't have taken them even half the time. It's the time to execute any move that matters here, and as you said before, with the Nature's Prophet, with the Spirit Breaker, with the Relocate, practically everyone inside of NIP can get around the map in a matter of seconds. It's only a matter of time at this rate before they look towards Roche as well. And then you have to look at the Roche find potential, and this is where Team Team do have a big advantage. You've got the Ravage, the Connect Field Static Storm, even the Tiny Avalanche in that secluded area. Yeah, whoever takes uh, a win in the next team fight is gonna grab the Roche. Both teams have Vlads, they have a lot of sustain with uh, 
Juggernaut's healing ward with the uh, Io. So all they need is a pick off. It's easier for NIP to get it because heroes inside of Team Team are really not that mobile. And of course NIP, they do have that BKB online that Jarrah copped in now. Will make them confident enough to just walk into the pit. It shouldn't take them too long to clean this up either. I imagine Team Team have to know this is going on, but... I, I don't think they saw the BKB pick up actually. They had a ward in their jungle. They might have spot out and that might be the reason that they're not looking. This is a free Roche for NIP. Team Team, well, they're, they're, it's not totally free. Alright, they got two bounty runes. Mostly great though. Two for two. Plus a Roche. Now we can take this. That trade any day is a decent trade. Yeah. We have the bot lane. Yo, yo, uh oh, he shoot himself again. The charge is coming in right now. They're looking to back him up. They know they're probably going to try and jump the tiny, but PPD actually cancels it, interesting enough. He already read this. They're smoked up around this tiny. They're going, okay, he died here just recently. They must be dangling him, right? There's no way possible he's making the same mistake twice. Um. Okay, so they they know something is up. Ike's Mike just dewarded. I'm just kind of looking at this though, and, and the team team's positioning. We said about how useless this tier two is. There's still tier ones on the map for NIP, and team team have focused their efforts here. Feels like you can get better value out of the other areas map. You know, maybe secure your jungle, take that back. They try to play around Tiny, put him as a bait. He's already died once, but uh, PPD read it really well. You feel like this is uh, they can't mega creep us if we keep those tier one, tier twos alive in the bot lane? Oh yeah, there you go. That's the next level strategy to say if we're playing around here, we never get mega creep. Imagine how different Dota would be if you had to take all the rats before you could take Throne. Uh, negative, sir. I don't. I don't want this kind of. Uh, that'd be horrible, right? Negativity in my life in Dota in general. This is why I don't like Tidehunter being shown this early. Like, the hero didn't do anything. He's 0 to 1. They can't find any openings. Uh, it feels like you need to use the Ravage, but you don't want to waste it because then it opens up the Roche for enemy team or just uh, opens up your towers. Yeah, you're basically more or less just committing Omni Slashes to ensure kills right now. And the relocate coming in on the Omni Slash man himself. He has got it available. We use it on the TPD alone. Cut across to the creep wave, the crash is gonna keep him alive, but Sammy Boy, he nice reduced play. the blade fury, TP's away mid Omni to make his escape. He knew what was up, he just wanted to force a reload KR. But that does mean your big kill tool right now on Team Team is now on cooldown. So where, where's your play? Tiny has to do something, and so far this blink dagger has been pretty underwhelming. They could just gather at the bottom lane, take tier 1, tier 2 by force, group up. It's like, what do you do on Team Team? Do you defend that or do you just take control of your jungle again and keep farming? This is always the awkward issue because there is an Aegis on this gyro. BKB as well. They just use Juggernaut ulti and that's their team fight damage, so I'm not sure if they they want to fight. You do say how useless these towers are in the bot lane, but they are at the same time your insurance policy against Mega Creeps after one big mistake in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, but you have two minutes on Roche, you, you want to use it. You just want to get the free gold for your team. And of course, Saxa does have level 15 now, as we just saw the Axe effect there, Ace. At this stage of the game, hit pretty hard already. They're just, they're just dodging. They don't want any part while NIP is just funneling. Because they can't fight. Omni on cooldown. 33 showing on a mid lane. Now he's building some real items. Vlad, Crimson Guard, they're just gonna continue. How many times have you just looked at Sanj and Yasha, you built it, and then you forgot it doesn't have a name? <laughs> you, you got that, I get that so often, I was like, oh, I don't slow him down anymore. I get surprised by the caller every time I see it, like, ooh, what's this? <laughs> Looks pretty indifferent. Yeah, loads of debates after the uh, the Kyra introduction. But Ace, he's not deterred here, he's just standing his ground. He's saying, team, team, you have to make a move soon. Sammy Boy is here. No one slash available just yet, though. No mana for the Ravage. He's got the wand, so he can use it if he wants to blow it off, but they do now have the Omni Slash. If they want to move, it has to be right now. Sam Boy going in. Blade Fury is going to be there. We're going to just get rid of the Neverwolf before he makes the move. He needs to be careful. Ryo with the blink in. The Avalanche is going to be 
Then Thatchcom comes down. They'll be clean up. Disrupted so easy. Now jumping in. Can they actually do enough damage? The Rav's already been blown. And the Omni Lash that through. We'll get the kill on the Io. They claim the Aegis, but now NIP ready to fight even more. Sammy Boy trying to stand ground against his PPD with never strike to move away. They'll get rid of the tight hunt. And Sammy Boy stuck in the tree line trying to make his escape. There's only so many trees you can cut. And they will go straight back to hitting your buildings. You just blew everything on that fight. And they just shrug it off. They use an Io, who cares? Yeah, and that's it. They lost with the Io. Even though Io had a buyback, if he wanted to, he could come back. Uh, just TP. Why even do that, Bug? Yeah, because everyone's full HP. He doesn't really need to do it. No serious commitment requirement for him. And even when Team Team has the whole lineup up, no Static Storm, no Ravage, no Omni Slash. This is enough time for them to take a second, uh, second lane on the side of NIP. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. No, they actually gotta respect them here. NIP want to play with their food. They're going to back off before they take the second set of racks. I mean, I guess they could have easily went for the second set, right? But there's no rush in their eyes right now. And yeah, they feel comfortable not, not to go for it. Uh, Roche could respawn in two and a half minutes if they want to wait for it. They can take shrines as well. Pagna has a full hex. You can just see the way that they just throw everything. And it barely kills anyone off it. Like, you expend everything just to get rid of that Jara Aegis. And then Dyer's you're just left just holding your junk in your hands. You can't do anything more. Jyro with SNY and Satanic 41% oh, status no. resistance. What up? Barely feels anything. You know? He might be able to move an Avalanche now. Oh, pink onto the head, the Tide Hunter, Snowball through, looking on Saxa, they're trying to move quick enough, but no, Sammy Boy stuck the tree line, will move through now, Saxa, stands around, the Ice Shards holds him in the Static Storm there as well, the BKP from Ace looking to fight up against his 33 finally arriving, there's the glimpse away, they'll get rid of one, that PBD, just stands around the middle, Omni Slash is going to attack the whole thing between him and Ace, but no, it barely bounces across Ace, Jaro getting back in, Saxa trying to keep Ace alive, and in this, he's trying to fight against the whole team, finally Father's going to arrive, it's not too late though, the Snowball, buys a little bit of time, but it's buying time for Ace, the buyback comes out, Ice says, okay, this is where we commit, this is where we went for the glimpse away. No, they can't actually Blank. help him re the avalanche. So enough, they get him. Triple kill for the Juggernaut. And they're going to hunt looking for more. The Blink Dagger 4 for 33. Just TP's right underneath their eyes. And Ravage is ready. Do Fada. they have a chase? Blink Dagger on cooldown. He can move away. And that was the biggest question I had in my mind is, where the hell was Fada? It took him so long to get there for that fight. Yeah, he was on, he was on the side. He was actually trying to protect uh, the Io once he got out of the fight. But uh, Io Dyer's managed to... To get back in, I think Gyro popped the uh, Satanic really early on. Not really necessary. Let's just uh, watch his HP. Oh, it looked like a little bit of a mistake for Sammy, but you see that blink in the tree line there. <laughs> that awkward moment where he just played Fury. Luckily, because he has that Battle Fury, he just cuts through the tree. But so much time spent just killing that Io. And all I can think is this whole time. Imagine this fight if Fada was here. How much that would have done different. Yeah, he popped Satanic during a... Okay, he didn't. What am I watching now? There we go. Yeah, yeah snowballed. He didn't they already snowballed. Nice, nice to snowballed. Nicely red, and the relocating just counted straight away, but you shouldn't have been so long the glimpse was off cooldown again. As a result, Team Team, they take a much needed fight to show a glimmer of hope for them here. Yeah, that was a fight without Ravage. Win probability. How are we looking? Oh, there you go. 68% chance to win for NIP now. The plus changed his mind from uh, the 17 minute mark. Drastically, in fact. There's always the frustration of Pugnus. <laughs> he doesn't need to be in the fight if he's hitting buildings. That's always the awkward issue is when you forfeit a lane this early on, you've always got one eye looking at your base. Really stunts movements around the map, right? Yeah, but you expect them to come either mid or top, so you don't play bottom part of the map. To get less gold anyway. Roche will respawn in a minute. Tight Hunter has a blink dagger right now. You're gonna have to make one hell of a ravage. They can't afford to give a second Roche up. I think it's interesting what you're saying about them, you know, knowing where the creeps are coming from now. It's like typically I feel like the best lane to take first is mid, right? Because then you can play the Benny Hills with the second lane. Hugging them back and forth between top and bottom. Along the way now, Team Team trying to de ward a little bit, get some vision around that pit. But NIP, they already prepped for this. Got ward in the die jungle. 
They got one defensive on their side as well. They got all eyes on that pit. This this is Oh no, no, nighttime vision. Okay. Mike finally figured out what's up. How awkward would that have been if that went without being oh, rewarded? That's, that's huge, but uh, look at the ward coming out from Mike. Does no have, one would look here either. Have some kind of a vision if they enter the Roche pit. It's very limited though. They're just trying to look for someone standing outside the pit here, basically. Use. Because the Pugna's probably going to try and lurk around yeah. the I sides. mean, he can use Frozen Sigil. Just kidding. He doesn't have that spell anymore. No, he got this new spell. You may have heard of it. It's called Tag Team. Ding ding. Pretty effective. Especially with your, uh, your tied Anchor Smash. Runes, let's see how it's going to go. NIP picking up three. With the ball, confuse you a little bit. Now, since Juggernaut already completed Monkey King Bar, Gyro should adapt to the situation, not go for, for a butterfly. He can go for AC if he wants. That's the old classic. What is your Nature's Prophet building to next? What's his target? It's a crucial item he has to get his hands on. Oh, he's the one building there the AC. Alright, he's going for the AC. He's just going to be the buffer. Just tanks up, exists, and gives the Gyro everything he needs to end this game. Gyro could have gone for Scotty instead. It would give him more stats, more HP, and it's really good against Juggernaut while he spins. But which one's going to make you hit harder? I mean, in that case, go Rapier, but we're not at that stage yet. Of course, Roshi is up, and you can already see both teams just trying to push in the waves, make sure they've got an easy way of going in. Team Team, they don't want to leave the area of this pit for a second. They don't trust the side of NIP. As they should. They need some kind of a defensive item on side of NIP, and Dio is finally getting one. A Glimmer Cape. A bit a bit too late, it's 30 plus minutes, but they need to keep alive other heroes, either Gyro or just for himself. But big pick up for the Disruptor. He has got the Axe now, so when they fight in this pit, no BKBs are popping off. As long as he catches them. If they can combine it with Tidehunter Blink again using the Ravage, it could be huge. Needs to be. They're still staring down the barrel of 13k net worth lead owned by NIP. One set of racks down on another tier 3 already on the ground. Team Team, they're not out of this. You know, Juggernaut is this type of hero. Against that type of lineup, he can ditch out the damage later on. Especially with the Blink Dagger pickup, which enables you to just hop between people with the Army Slash. Originally thought to be a meme, but pretty effective. Just interesting to look at the lack of attack speed. That he's got in his build, right? Like you've got, you get some from the Yasha. Battle Fury's not adding uh, MKB, not MKB, the old MKB. Ten attack ten speed. Ten attack speed, but not the old MKB with all that attack speed. And then he's going for the the Basher into Abyssal next. Yeah, he's gonna run out of slots. That's when you get the moon shards. Double damage spawned on the bottom. Roche is up, but everyone has the vision of it. This is what I was talking about, the cost. This would be the balance Double for DD, right? Has to blame. be at the bottom. Then you have to pick it up, walk all the way there. If they haven't got vision over that, then that's their fault. Is this where NIP sinks in? Juggernaut's gone back to deal with this creep wave. I think they're going to try and claim the high ground in the jungle and then look for a pick off. Yeah, it's smoke. Of course, 33 doesn't have to be there. He can TP in. Smoke coming out from Team Team. Looks like they're about to clash. Both teams having enough of just waiting around. Well, there it is. Oh, don't move forward. There's the Raps coming out. The BKB first to make. Chase the ball to Moon Team. We're getting the Stalin Storm down. Maybe a little bit too late. Wolf punch through. Look at the Iron. Can they do enough? The buyback comes out from the Punk straight away. The move through. Omni Slash doing a decent amount. They bring down the IO. Buyback available to Tide Hunter, but he already used the Ravage. Never strike to this fast back Sammy Boy. No easy way to escape from the Hex Eva. Gonna stand their ground, try and farm against this avalanche. Is good, the life drain is tanking everything. Tiny, so much HP to work with. Is it enough just to get out of range? And instead, Tusk will go down. Ace hey, stands his ground. The tree is just trapping in Sammy Boy. He has to buy back. But for what? What are you gonna do with this? Because you use your Static Storm, you use your Ravage, and your Tiny's almost dead. Yeah, they, they're running out of steam. Oh, All those back. 33 being found. He's gonna go for TP away, but the snowball drops at the Wars Punch as well. Can he TP away? Yeah, no! So close! Sammy Boy hits a little bit too hard. Close, but no cigar for the Nature's Prophet. And actually, Team Team, they secure the pit. Fata was trying to play around his Blink Dagger, trying to dodge. Oh, the they ran But he got gushed and instantly killed by Tiny and Tide. 
They want to go right now. They say Team Team have, they have one extra hero, but they haven't got any ultimates. If we go now, maybe we can do something here. Or at least force them out of the pit. But Sammy Foy refuses to leave. And Dagon gets him low. Blade Fury to move away. They have no way of stopping him right now, but they have stopped him from taking Roche. Someone has to go back to deal with the creep wave, by the way. The bot has pushed in pretty heavily. Also, top lane is pushing no, no siege creeps, but Ravage on cooldown for 50 seconds. NIP should just go in and try to try to take it. But that's the thing. Team Team, you can see moving back right now. They have to fully disengage, because the moment one person shows on either of those creep waves, anyone left standing near that pit is dead. You haven't got a shrine that you can TP to anymore. That was the biggest thing about all those buybacks, is you saw them all TP to the bot shrine, and they had to run all the way across. And IP had all the time in the world to just escape. And there we go, they're going to claim the roach right now. Mike lingering around, he knows what's going on. Can he stop it though? The Hex is going to be there. Never Strike as well. Live drain. They lose vision. They actually cancel Never Strike. They get turned around. Look at the kill and the product. Can they get him though? There's trees. There's the Walrus punch. Get rid of him. They pick up the Ace in the meantime. And Ace, he's on the hunt. On the prowl, can he find anything to kill? Sammy boy, Lobo Troll turns around the office side, so they're gonna go to work, Ace, Satanic. trying to tank it up to Satanic, Satsa, he's getting low, can they finish him off? The Ice Shard, stopping them from pursuing him. He's gonna live, Ravage comes out, it's finally enough to break his little heart. And Ace, he'll run for the high hills, 33 in the back, but looking to kill Nanushin, but he won't be able to find it either. Team, team, they might have lost their Roche, but they win the fight. The BKB forced out from Gyrocopter, PBD gets left behind, it's now four. Kill for the side of Team Team, and finally that tier one tower might be fallen. Oh man, I, I can't believe Plugin has switched back to to Dagon. He doesn't have a single defensive item, has a blink dagger, but he he's not fast enough. He's just gonna die. He doesn't even have. At least if he didn't want to go for a BKB in this scenario, he could have got. Um, I can't remember the, the name. <laughs> <laughs> that gives status resistance. Oh, they on this. Yeah, they yes, are. you can't die item. Wouldn't be Sometimes terrible in scenario. Your brain just freezes. I'm trying to think, like, how does that work? I don't think I've seen it too often when you life drain a teammate with A on disc one. Does it stop you removing health from yourself? It's only from uh, enemy enemy. From enemies. Damage, okay, yeah. yeah. Damn. There goes the ultimate medic build. As a result, Team Team finally out on the map and finally taking control. I mean, this is the interesting part here. Just the turnaround, the trees look good, but Warrus Punch hurts, man. It really does. The problem is they don't have any kind of damage. Gyrocopter still doesn't feel like he's doing that much damage in a team fight. Nation's Prophet's dealing basically none. You have a Spirit Breaker as well. They're relying only on this gyro, and he's going full glass cannon. He's getting Daedalus. You're also chasing into a, like a, a thin area without vision on that high ground against the Disruptor of Ags and a Tidehunter. You've got to expect that to happen. But picking up the Aegis, they felt confident. Maybe if Saxa didn't die, they would have been fine, but there's a point at which an Io can't linger off to the sides, and that's usually when you go into a choke point. Smoke movement coming out from NIP though. They want to make something happen. They've still got the Aegis despite losing that fight. They have a cheese on IO as well. Still two and a half minutes for Aegis. Look at the XP swing by the way though. Because it's now 5k XP lead for the side of Team Team at the back of that fight. You know, you get some useful talents coming into effect here as this goes on. Oh, Hex moving in, they're looking to make the move here, but there's the Sack's down, BKB the outpost of Ace. I find fine time with Snowball, the obvious slash going across, but Ace is tanking most of it. I have Mike will fall, Sammy Boy falls the right side of the shot, gonna turn around, looking for the kill, the buyback comes out, Spirit Breaker, Ravage is there, but Ace, he's still healing up, they need to get rid of Io first, but they can't. Abyssal just to run away, but that status resistance from Ace means he can keep on chasing. There's a chance coming from PBD. He's about to arrive. The Hex is there as well. Looks like Sammy Boy's in a little bit of trouble. He has no escape plan. He's going to be down. No buyback available on him. Ryoya trying to stand his ground. We'll get the kill to fart up. Now he needs to escape. Problem is, NIP are on your base. Knocking on your door, and the buildings to hit if they want them. Lucian, greedily looking for the kill. They'll find him. Oh, he got him. Side gunner. Extra attack. And uh, this is it. There's no uh, buyback on Juggernaut. Only, Say only Tiny and Gyro have have a buyback. They could easily just go for a throne and finish the game. There's no Ravage. This is this is over. And IP, they go for the throne knowing that they can just end this right now. Rio with the last two raw attempt is someone cooldown is gonna connect on the Brax, and that means that Tiny is all alone. And they already just rip him to shreds. He has a buyback. Trying to buy. 
some time, but it's not gonna be enough. Brax is trying to taunt them. This might work. They're falling for it. But they're still gonna go for the pro. GG. An IP, they take game one. And team team. There, there was a glimmer of hope. Around that road pit with the choke points, they, they, they had a few moments where we saw the draft come to life, but it feels like they were still recovering from the laning phase. Yeah, this juggernaut was causing a lot of problems.